1863, during the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation that declared all slaves free. However, there was no immediate change as African Americans were still discriminated against. We find this to be the start or the background of the Black Lives Matter movement as events escalated because of racial prejudice and though racism was always alive, it was most active during the Civil War. About a century later, America witnesses and participates in the Civil Rights Movement. The Civil Rights Movement was an organized effort by Black Americans to end racial discrimination and to gain equal rights under the law, focusing in education, social segregation, and voting rights. MLK and Malcolm X were two of the most significant leaders that carried this movement forward. MLK was a social activist who's most famous for his I Have a Dream speech and advocating for nonviolent methods of protest. Malcolm X was an American Muslim minister and human rights activist. He challenged the mainstream civil rights movement and the nonviolent pursuit of integration championed by MLK and instead urged followers to defend themselves against white aggression by any means necessary. Born Malcolm Little, he changed his last name to X to signify his rejection of his slave name. A party that rose from the civil rights movement, the Black Panther Party, initially looked to protect vulnerable individuals from police brutality. They promoted black nationalism and socialism and supported racial dignity and self-reliance. In order for their voices to be heard, they called for blacks to work together to protect their rights and to improve their economic and social conditions. They wanted to almost create an exclusive black community, rich and strong black individuals in order to rise from discrimination and have a real chance in society. We see the Black Panther Party's intentions still relevant today as a Black Lives Matter movement fight for freedom and justice for all black lives. The death of two prominent leaders of the Black Panther Party, Fred Hampton and Mark Clark, was very controversial as they were gunned down by the Chicago police while they were asleep in their apartment. Authorities claimed that the Black Panthers opened fire on the police while they were serving a search warrant for weapons and maintained that they were justified in their return fire. However, a federal investigation showed that the FBI, the Cook County State's Attorney's Office, and the Chicago Police Department worked together to assassinate Hampton. Only one shot was fired by the Panthers. Police, on the other hand, fired 82 to 99 shots. Cook County State Attorney Edward Hanran was indicted for the raid, but was cleared along with 13 other law enforcement agents. This event was one of the FBI counterintelligence efforts aimed at weakening the organization. Along with this, criminal activities and an internal rift between group members together weakened the party as a political force. From the death of Fred Hampton, tension between blacks and police forces only increases and we see this crime call for action for black individuals. Rodney King was an African-American who became a symbol of racial tension in America after his violent beating by Los Angeles police officers was videotaped and broadcast to the nation. King was caught by the LA police after a high-speed chase, pulled out of his car and beaten brutally while it was caught on videotape. The four LAPD officers involved were indicted on charges of assault with a deadly weapon and excessive use of force by a police officer. However, after a three-month trial, a predominantly white jury acquitted the officers, inflaming citizens and sparking the violent 1992 Los Angeles riots where more than 50 people were killed, over 2,000 injured, and hundreds of buildings were burned. This case brought to the forefront the issue of police brutality and lack of accountability for misconduct and abuse. The video proved exactly what African Americans had been protesting throughout the 20th century, but to many South Central residents, the verdict meant that even visual proof of police brutality against African Americans did not matter. The Black Lives Matter movement started after the death of Trayvon Martin, an innocent 17-year-old African American who was fatally shot. A couple years later, Michael Brown, an unarmed African-American teenager, was also shot. We see this movement really come alive as both teenagers were shot by police officers and police brutality has anything but slowed down. Preceding these events, vigils and marches were held in order to recognize the life of the individuals and to declare a change in the system. The phrase, quote unquote, Black Lives Matter, was used in order to emphasize how vulnerable African-Americans were and still are. The Black Lives Matter movement is still fighting, and especially for justice. Walter Scott was shot on April 4, 2015 in North Charleston, South Carolina, following a daytime traffic stop for a non-functioning brake light. Scott, an unarmed black man, was murdered by Michael Slager, a white North Charleston police officer. Slager was charged with murder after a video surfaced which showed him shooting Scott from behind while Scott was fleeing, and which contradicted his police report.
The race difference led many to believe that the shooting was racially motivated, generating a widespread controversy. We see this movement here, locally in Portland. DeRay McKesson, a leader for the Black Lives Matter movement, advocated for equality and black rights during his stay. He is currently using social media as a platform to spread his message and bring more awareness to the movement and the serious issues and challenges that African Americans must face on the daily. He's also working on Campaign Zero, a group that reviews police union contracts nationwide and points out policies that allow police to escape consequences of misconduct. An experiment conducted in the 1970s, the Stanford Prison Experiment, looked into the psychology of those in power. In brief, those with power, the guards, had no sympathy towards the prisoners and were controlling. They would wake them up during ungodly hours and harass and torture them. We see this tie-in with the Black Lives Matter movement as some are questioning if police are abusing their power. The Stanford Prison Experiment has been used to explain the psychology of police in their treatment of civilians. However, statistics show that there is a clear disproportionate use of brutality against blacks and people of color versus whites. Overall, this experiment doesn't show the difference in treatment of race. Instead, it shows the behavior of people in power. In 2018, black people were three times more likely to be killed by police than were whites. 34.9% of the people killed by cops, even though they were unarmed and not attacking, were black. Blacks were 25% of those killed, but are only 13% of the population. On top of this, the justice system favors police. While some officers involved in police violence are never indicted, in other cases, officers faced trial but were not convicted. Convictions remain very rare in police shooting cases, and officers who are given prison time for their involvement in shootings is rarer still. In fact, the only acknowledgement of wrongdoing often comes in the form of settlements given to the families of police shooting victims, but these settlements, which usually arrive after lawsuits and in most cases aren't given, are far from the systemic reform that activists and families of victims have demanded. Case in point, Gregory Hill was fatally shot by a white sheriff's deputy who had responded to a noise complaint about music Mr. Hill had been playing in his own garage. The family filed a lawsuit and the jury awarded $4 in damages and ultimately reduced this amount to 4 cents. From the 1940s to the 1970s, Mexican Americans were fighting for equal rights. Just like the civil rights movement, leaders like Res Lopez Tijerino and Rodolfo Gonzalez spoke out publicly and advocated for equal opportunities for Mexican Americans. The movement wanted Mexican Americans to take pride in their own identity, assert their civil rights, and work towards self-determination by improving their financial, social, and political circumstances. Additionally, in the case of Miranda versus Arizona, Miranda, a Latino man, basically changed the justice system and now when someone is arrested, police officers must say your Miranda rights. Quote, unquote, you have the right to remain silent. Though change may be slow in the police justice system, it is evident that it can change. This problem is still prevalent, but the movement is gaining support and there is possible change.